is The Editor Show, and I'm your host, Jackie Wayman. And my guests today are Ro Parker and Stephen Wells, also known as Monk, from the Cultural Center. And um, today we're going to talk about the Tunnel of Oppression. So um, I guess that's occurring November 7th and 8th. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Um, well, Tunnel of Oppression is um, an interactive program. It's a, it's a human rights program that was developed probably about 12 years ago out of the um, University of Illinois. And it's, it was modeled after the Museum of Tolerance um, in Los Angeles and also a little bit after the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. Um, the purpose was to raise awareness about the different types of oppression taking place in our society and around the world. Very nice. So um, I know that you're helping organize it, or are you the major organizer this year? Well, it's it's kind of Roe and I together. We 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 do a lot of you know meeting at the the turnbuckle and high fiving and, and exchanging roles and and just making sure it's a good production. I think I think overall um, my role in it is to recruit students, to recruit student leaders, and to in a sense uh, ignite their passions. Uh, for this, this objective, uh, to take participants to that place where they can experience oppression for themselves. Um, so this has, this has a lot to do with a form of uh, knowledge creation that is not so much intellectual to where I would, you know, I have information and I'm gonna tell you about something, in this case, oppression uh, and the experience of underrepresented peoples. It's much more about taking the participant uh, who comes to the theater and putting them in the position to experience the form of oppression. So rather than telling you, I put you in the position to feel it, sense it, um, taste it. Um, and in some ways, it, when a person leaves the theater, they're forever changed by virtue of the fact that, um, especially an individual that's never been targeted or profiled for a particular form of oppression, marginalization, or exploitation, suddenly is. That's really hard to forget, and it affects everything uh, that you look at after your experience in the tunnel, things like the evening news or um, reports that you see on the internet. Mm -hmm. So what kind of responses, I know you guys have done this for about uh, four years now, and this is your second year. Um, what kind of responses do you get from students after going through this? Um, I think we, we really get a, a wide variety of, of responses um, from I had no idea hmm. this happened every day to people to uh, students and participants that relive some of that and maybe had forgotten what that was like but related to some part of their life where they faced depression. Um, to, you know, we, we have people coming out of there in tears. Hmm. Um, we have people that come out of there numb. We have people that come out of there feeling like it's okay. And um, that's why it's really important for us, and we've always provided um, a debriefing time for them. So as soon as they leave tunnel, they are um, escorted to go into a debrief room where we have trained debriefers to talk to them about what they experienced. And then we provide information for them in case, because we know that Sometimes it takes a long time to process things. And if people are still processing in a few days or a few weeks, they may want to talk to, to individuals about it. Um, so our counseling department on, on campus has become involved with providing information and asking students if, you know, if they're having trouble processing some of the things that they've seen or experienced mm -hmm. to come and visit them and that they would be happy to talk to them about that. Um, so it, it's a wide variety of responses and um, we've tried to to anticipate what those will be so that we can provide resources and support for them. Yeah, that's yeah well, I was going to add to that. The, the other um, side of it is, um, you know, being in the director role, I'm, I'm inside the tunnel as, as, the, as it repeats itself every 30 minutes for each new audience. And the thing that's very interesting is to watch the actors at work mm -hmm. because there, there, there are two different sides of it. One is the side, um, of the time when your theater is not actually performing. And the actors that are in that theater, it's, it's really wonderful because underneath the sets that the participants walk through are things like textbooks and laptops, <laughs> and people are laughing and playing games and you know playing video games, and there's that side of it. And they can shift psychologically from, I'm working on my homework, 
to suddenly I am inflicting an immigration raid on a participant. Uh, I'm going to be arresting that individual. I'm going to be processing, the, processing them as an illegal uh, immigrant, as an illegal worker, and slamming them into a van. So there's, there's a lot of um, psychological obstacles to, to overcome as an actor. But I think the other thing that's very important about it is actors um, get their voice, if you will. They get to talk back to dominant culture uh, by virtue of their roles, because for, you know it's like for for just a few moments, the individuals who have been oppressing become the individuals who will now be oppressed, and they are on the they are on the, the delivering side of that. So the the anger, the the rage, um, these very strong emotions and feelings um, pour forth, and yet take their shape through the role of the oppressor. And, w in, and because of that, they're received in a very, very strong way by the participant, which I think yeah. brings those uh, emotional responses from them. So who are the, are they students who are the actors that are participating in this, mm -hmm. forming by, the tunnel? By and large, they are. Um, occasionally, we'll have a few high school students, uh, brothers and sisters of Bo Boise State students that want to come in and participate and learn. Um, the, the, the most important part, I think, not to establish a hierarchy of sorts, but you really have to laud the, the role of the team lead because every, every theater, and there usually are anywhere from four to six individual theaters that you pass through, each one has a team lead. And those individuals, from the minute they become a lead, team lead, are responsible for recruiting their fellow actors uh, for their theaters, making the right choices in terms of that. Um, and then guiding them in their roles in the creation of scripts that will take the participant to that place where all their perceptions get blown and challenged and redressed. So they've got a lot on their shoulders and we've got some really good teams, uh, team leads this year and I'm looking forward to see what they come up with. Yeah, me too. Um, at this point in time, are, is there any available uh, volunteer opportunities for people who want to participate in the Tunnel of Oppression? Yeah, yeah I, th I think that there's still um, quite a bit of opportunities for people that want to be involved in each of the different committees in for the different theaters. Um, but also, we do have opportunities for people that cannot commit that much time. Um, mm -hmm. So for example, the debrief people, the people that want to work with counseling, um, to, to be trained on how to debrief people that are coming out of the tunnel. Um, we also need guides to help us that day. Um, mm. Guides will take uh, groups of probably 25 to 30 people through the tunnel every half an hour, and um, they have the responsibility of making sure that they keep each scene on time so that it goes through and people get started, uh, the next group will get started on time, and they also have the really important responsibility of uh, making sure that nobody leaves without getting debriefed. Mm -hmm. So um, peop we have different um, different types of volunteering that can be done depending on people's time, um, mm -hmm. what they have time for. Okay, mm -hmm. and if people want to volunteer, how do they contact you to do that? Uh -huh. um, they can uh, contact us via our MySpace and or our website. <laughs> it's at mm -hmm. MySpace. Okay. We can you can access both of them. Um, CulturalCenter.BoiseState.edu has our email. It also you can also get on our MySpace from there. Um, it also has um, our contact information, phone number. Okay. And, and the other way would be to just go to the cultural center, come to the front desk, and we can get you set up from there. The other right. thing is to realize we uh, have a uh, Tunnel of Oppression information booth that runs every Wednesday until the Tunnel of Oppression from 8 a.m. until 5, uh, right there in the information area there in the sub and first floor. Right. And the cultural center, for people who don't know where it's at, is on the second floor of the sub, kind of... Um, on the east end, right? Yeah, That's they're correct. right above the student government office. No, west end. I guess that would, yeah, that would yeah, be the west end. Yeah, it would end. be the west end. N near, the, near the spec. Right. And you also mentioned to me that um, groups can pre-register to go through the Tunnel of Oppression. And individuals or groups can register. If uh, people go to our website, um, culturalcenter.boisestate.edu slash tunnel, you can register as an individual. Um, if you have a class that you want to register or if you want to go through together as an organization or, or a group, you can also do that. There's different um, 
uh, links that you can use to do that. The one thing that we asked uh, people to do, and I think it's an issue every year, is uh, make sure that you know what day you register for, um, mm -hmm. because sometimes they'll show up on Friday and their appointment is not until Saturday, and we end up having to accommodate a lot of people, but it fills up quickly, mm -hmm. and um, it's really hard to ac accommodate a large group that um, comes on Friday and was meant for Saturday, but we do the best we can. We try to put mm. them through anyway. And another thing to think about is a lot of students right about now are looking at their GPAs and wondering how the grades are going to come out at the end of the semester. And it's really important to recognize that there are a great many classes that have, that offer applicable content associated with the tunnel of oppression. So we encourage students to go to their professors, their instructors, mm -hmm. and say, is there a possibility of me doing some extra credit work by attending tunnel and writing a reflection? I think a lot of times they're going to get an affirmative response and the opportunity for extra points in their classes. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, is there any other information that you'd like to share with us? about the tunnel. Don't miss tunnel. It happens <laughs> yeah. really fast and then it's just gone. Yeah, I was really sad I missed it last year. I'm looking forward to it. So, All right. Well, thank you, Ro and Monk. Thank you. And you've been watching the Editor's Show. Thank you.